Today, we begin our preparation for the Chapter 7 test, which is coming um, a week from Friday, I believe. Before I mislead you, let me check. Um, let's see, this assignment is due, um, yes, Friday, so it would be May 8th is our Chapter 7 test, May 8th. All right, so we have part one of the review assignment. Here we go. Oh, and by the way, this is a reminder to myself to remind you that all the answers for the chapter wrap-up sections, such as page 326, uh, 336 and 337, all the answers from the back of the book, evens and odds. Take advantage. All right, number two. The square root of 16x squared, well, that's no problem. We know the square root of 16 is 4... And we know the square root of x squared is x, but wait just a moment. Something that some of you were not paying attention to earlier and never quite caught on to. If you take a square root, an even index, the invisible index of 2, you take an even root, you must use absolute value. Your answer is not completely correct, and you will lose credit if you don't include those absolute value symbols for absolute value of x. Uh, number four, fifth root of negative 243. On the test, I would not give you one that requires that much thinking, but it doesn't take too long to realize, well, let's see, it's, it can't be a two because it's odd, uh, and two to the fifth is nowhere near 243. Um, it's, but it's gotta be kinda small, how about three? So you try three times three times three times three times three, you might remember that 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. 81 times 3 again. Hey, it works. So this is negative 3. Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 243. Yes, you can take an odd index, an odd root, of a negative, no problem. You cannot take an odd root of, I'm sorry, you can <laughs> say it again, you cannot take an even root of a negative, not without using imaginary numbers. Uh, number six, a couple of approaches to this. You could simplify these guys first or you could multiply first. Let's be nice to ourselves. Let's simplify first. What square pachings out of 18? Yeah. 2 times 9. The 9 pachings. We care about the 2 times 9 because we know the square root of 9. It can pop out. Paching! Turns into a 3 on the outside. We're left inside because the 9 came out. We're left with a 2 on the inside and an x. Here, that 12 becomes 4 times 3. Why do we care? Because we know the square root of 4. Paching! 4 pops out, turns into a 2 on the outside, square root of x. Well, what do we do with that now? Well, 3 times 2, 6. What's the square root of x times the square root of x? That would be the square root of x squared, which is x. But just a moment. Should it be absolute value of x? One would think so. Square root of x times square root of x is square root of x squared, which is absolute value of x. But we're still left with one thing inside the radical that could not come out. That poor 2 was never able to come out. Now, one side of me says, yes, that is your final answer. But the other side of me says, you know something? I already know that x cannot be negative because we can't have a square root of a negative. If x is already guaranteed to be 0 or positive, then why do I need to repositize it? I don't. Therefore, a better simplified answer would be 6x square root of 2. It's one of those situations where you could just plain forget to deal with the, the absolute value and still be right. Because since we know x has to be positive, we don't need to make it positive again. I'm curious to see how the book expressed that answer. Uh, did the book, yeah, the book writers left it like this. 
because it never occurred to them that x cannot be negative to begin with. Number eight. <clears throat> For number eight, um, again, there are often multiple ways to look at these things. Let's do it like this. Mm. Oh, let's just put it all together first. See, we could try to simplify this first, and there's not much to simplify in here to do. We could try to simplify this first, which would not be difficult, and then multiply. Well, I think it might be more straightforward to just go ahead and multiply first. It is your choice. 3 sixteens are 48. C squared times C squared is C to the fourth. D to the fifth times C to the second is D to the seventh. Now we simplify. How do we simplify? We take out perfect cubes. What perfect cube goes into 48? What are the perfect cubes? Uh, perfect cubes are 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 6 cubed, whatever it is, 2, 4, I'm not sure. These are examples of perfect cubes. Is there a perfect cube that goes into 48? Yes, there is. 8 goes into 48. So, back here now, we will either in our head or on paper, Change that 48 into 6 times 8. We care because we know the cubed root of 8. So the 8 is able to ching out. What is the cubed root of 8? Cubed root of 8 is 2. It comes out. Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the cubed root of 8 is ching 2. Um, we're going to be left with something inside. Let's see what else we can take out, though. Oh, while we're, before we forget, we took out the 8, but we're stuck with the 6. Sorry. C to the 4th. Of that C to the 4th, we can take out C cubed of it. That C to the 4th is just like C cubed times C, right? Well, don't I know the cubed root of C to the 3rd? Sure. Cubed root of C to the 3rd is pa -ching! C. No absolute value, because we never use absolute value with an odd index. Uh, but watch out, we're left with that C, don't forget about him. Then D to the 7th, I can take out any multiples of 3. In other words, I can think of that D to the 7th as being D to the 6th times D. Because I know the cubed root of D to the 6th is D squared. Pa ching D squared. What am I left with inside? That poor D that can't come out. Hey, you can use shortcuts now. When we first saw this stuff back in the beginning of the chapter, we didn't have any shortcuts. Now we do. Wouldn't this be D to the 6 over 3? D to the 6 thirds? D to the second on the outside? But please don't forget, we're stuck with that 7th D left behind. We're done. Number 10, let's get this out of there, it's in the way maybe, maybe not. All right, for number 10, square root of 12a cubed over b to the seventh, not a big deal. They're just trying to emphasize that these same rules work for fractions as they do for non-fractions. Um, the 12 becomes a 4 times 3. The 4 pachings out, but we're taking the square root of 4, it pachings out as a 2. We're left inside with a uh, 3. Of the a to the third, a squared of it can paching out. That a to the third is the same thing as a squared times a. But I know the square root of a squared, paching, pops out. Absolute value of a. Even index, I've got to use absolute value. And then what are we left with, though? We took out the a squared, ba -ching, there it is, but we're still left with that a inside. Over square root of b to the seventh. Well, let's think of that b to the seventh as being b to the sixth times b, right? But we know the square root of b to the sixth. 
or b to the 6 over 2, b to the 3rd on the outside. But watch out, it is in the denominator. It's got to stay in the denominator, b to the 3rd on the outside of the radical, but in the denominator. And it's over square root of b squared. Now, there are a number of ways this could be expressed, and I'm curious to see how the book writers did it here. Um, where did they get that answer? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I would not give you one as tricky as what they're making this one become. I'm satisfied with this. We're going to leave it as is. There is something else that perhaps should be done to it, but we're not going to worry about it. Interesting. Okay, number 12. Number 12, remember, you can only combine like radicals. These don't look like like radicals, but they are. They are like radicals in disguise. Yes. Because we can simplify square root of 32. What perfect square can be factored out of a 32. How about 16 times 2? Because I know the square root of 16 ba -ching, pops out becomes a 4. The square root of 16 is 4. But it's 4 times the old 2 that was already out there. So we actually have 8 square root of who was the wrong size to come out. Who is not a square? 2 is not a square. He's stuck inside the poor thing. Minus. What perfect square comes out of 50? Mm -hmm. 25 times 2. Why do we care? Because we know the square root of 25. Ba ching Pops out, becomes a 5 on the outside. What's left on the inside? The 2. Only squares are allowed to come out. 2 is not a square. He's stuck inside. Sorry about that, 2. Plus, what square comes out of 162? Think simple. Half of 16, 8. Half of 1, a half of 2 is 1. It's 81 times 2. Yes. What's the square root of 81? Ba ching 9. Inside, we're left with the 2. And now we look at this, we say, oh, they're all like terms. Yes, they are all like terms. I have 8 of these guys minus 5 of those guys. That's 3 of those guys plus nine, <coughs> 9 of those guys gives me a total of 12 of those guys. Just as if we had 8x minus 5x plus 9x, we would have 12x. But instead of x, we have square roots of 2. <clears throat> Number 14. All right, with 14, yes, once again, we have to simplify first. There's nothing to simplify here. Oh, yes, there is. What about the square root of y cubed? Yes, we think of that y cubed as being y squared times, times, oh, come on, I got right. y squared times y. Why do we care? Once again, because we know the square root of y squared. ba -ching! The y pops out. And it's an even index, so we need absolute value. Break down the 5. What's left inside? The 3 that we couldn't touch, and that extra leftover y that we can't touch. We all, of the y to the third, we only took out y squared of it. Minus, here, think of that 12 as being 4 times 3. The 4, yep, you got it. The 4 goes, ba -ching, pops out, becomes a 2 on the outside. What's left inside? A 3. And don't forget the y. <gasps> Look, they're like terms. Yes, they are like terms. Only complication here, they, they're, the book writers are being kind of mean to you. Uh, the complication is that we can't combine 5y minus 2. So we simply write 5y minus absolute value of, uh, oops, wait, 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 what am I doing? Yes. No, wait a minute. I just got mixed up with my absolute value. 5 absolute value of y minus 2 times the square root of 3y. If we can't combine this stuff, 
with this stuff. We just write it in parentheses like that. Basically, we're factoring out the square root of 3y. See that? We're basically just factoring out the square root of 3y. And that's all we can do. And again, sometimes the book writers surprise me with their use of absolute value. Um, did the book writers include absolute value? Yes, they did. They did. All right, number 16. <clears throat> Oh, and by the way, the deep thinkers among you may be saying, Mr. Pierre, back in the original problem, y would not be allowed to be negative. So why do we need absolute value? Yeah, you're right. We really don't this time. Number 16. Ah, you can either use the old shortcut for a plus b quantity squared, or you can multiply it out using FOIL, a plus b, times a plus b. It is your choice. But folks, it is not, it is absolutely not equal to 3 squared of 6 squared plus 2 squared. There is no distributive property of exponents over addition. No, it does not work. a plus b quantity squared is not equal to a squared plus b squared. That's old information. We talked about that a long time ago. We've seen that a zillion times. Some of you have tried it on tests and have messed up because you thought this was true. It is not true. Well, when I put the not equal, that becomes true. They are not equal. So what do we do? Well, uh, let's use the old a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared trick. So we'll square the first term. How do we square this monster? You square the 3, and you square the square root of 6. We square the 3, and we square the square root of 6, which is just 6. We've got 9 times 6. Let's go right now and change that to 54. We've got 54. That's the a squared part. Now we do 2 times a times b, plus 2 times a times b. a times b would be 6 square root of 6. We're going to double that, so that's 12 square root of 6. 2 times 3 is 6, doubled is 12 square root of 6. And then we square our last term, b squared, b2 squared being 4, we're done. Oh, not quite because we can put these guys together. We must simplify. Don't leave your answer like that. That gives us 58 plus 12 square root of 6. And now we're done. And never trusting myself too much. Uh, yep, that's what my book says. Number 18. Oh, first of all, I want to go back to a couple of problems here. Odd numbered problems that were not assigned, but are extremely important. 7 minus 4 square root of 3 times 7 plus 4 squared of 3. Do you recall how to do a plus b times a minus b? It's a squared minus b squared. Remember that. So, that being the case here, a minus b times a plus b, all I have to do is square this guy. That's 49. Square this guy. That's going to be 16 times 3. That's 48 and put a minus in between. But Mr. Peer, we learned just recently that you always put a plus in between. Ah, uh, you put a plus in between when you're dealing with the imaginary numbers. These are not imaginary numbers. This is very straightforward, old-fashioned a plus b times a minus b. It will always be a squared minus b squared as long as you're not working with imaginary numbers. So our final result is just plain. 1. 17. Let's see, no tricks in 17. We just have to foil it out. So these are not conjugates. Uh, uh, it's, we just have to foil it out. That's it. So to foil this guy, first this gives us 2 times the cubed root of 2 times 2. That'll be 2 times the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 2 is the cube root of 4. Do not fall to the temptation of thinking the cube root of 4 is 2. It is not. 
the square root of 4 is 2, the cube root of 4 is irrational. Don't know, don't care what it is. That's the firsts. Outers, that'll be 6, cube root of 6. 6, cube root of 6. Watch my fingers again. That'll be 6, cube root of 6. The inners gives us 1 cube root of 6. 1, 1, 1 cube root of 6. Of course, I could have kept this, these two in my head long enough to put them together as how many cube root of 6s? I've got 6 of them plus 1 more of them. That's going to be 7 cube root of 6. Then the lasts, meaning these guys, Last guy here times last guy there. That'll be 3 cube root of 3 times 3, or 3 cube root of 9. That's plus 3 cube root of 9. And don't fall to the temptation. Cube root of 9 is not 3. Square root of 9 is 3. Cube root of 9, I don't know, it's irrational. We'll put these two guys together. Our final answer is 2 cube root of 4 plus 6 of them, 1 more of them, 7 cube root of 6 plus 3 cube root of 9. Rather ugly answer, but that's the way it goes. Sometimes they're ugly. Uh, very important that you be able to do that, even though it was not, <clears throat> not on the assignment. Also not on the assignment, numbers 9 and 11. Let's take a look at those quickly. Huh, can we do any of these quickly? I don't know. Remember, when you have division, and both of these guys are under the same radical, cube root, cube root, you can either in your head or on paper combine them into a single rat radical. radical. Why would we want to do that? Well, because 32 over 2 becomes 16. We've got cube root of 16. Uh, still needs to be simplified, though. Is there a perfect cube that goes evenly into 16? Yes. How about 8 times 2? That's an 8. 8 times 2. Because we know the cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. Ching! We get 2. What's left inside? This guy can't come out. We're done. And number 11, also not on the assignment, but also very important. Let's do the same thing we did back here. Let's simplify the fraction first. This time, let's take a shortcut. Let's not bother writing the whole thing as a fraction. Let's reduce it as we go. 40 over 3 becomes 4 thirds x to the 7th over x to the 3rd. I trust you remember how to do that. When dividing, you subtract the exponents. Or you say to yourself, these three guys cancel out three of these guys, leaving you with x to the 4th in the numerator. Now we simplify that. Do we know the square root of 4? Sure, pull it out. Do we know the square root of x to the 4th? Yes, it's x squared. I don't need absolute value because x squared is already positive. And then we have square root of 3 goes down here. Now again, one of the situations where this part of the chapter, we had not yet learned how to get that radical out of the denominator. We should get it out of there, but I'm curious to see what the book writers did here because it was not in this part of the chapter. This is number 11. How did they express their answer? Uh, they, whoa, that doesn't, something's horribly wrong. What have I done? Did I copy the problem right? 40 over 30. Oh, I sure did. I copied it wrong, I mean. I copied it wrong. Maybe you already caught that. Uh, this looks good to me, but that was supposed to be a 32. 32 x to the third. That changes things a good bit. Now what do we have? Now what do we have? Okay, let's divide by 8 and divide by 8. That gives us 5x to the 7th 
over 4x cubed. Yeah, that's going to be prettier. We don't know the square root of 5. We're stuck with that. We can take out x to the 6th because we know the square root of x to the 6th is x to the 3rd. Pull it out. Uh, we're left with an x inside. And in the denominator, we know the square root of 4 is 2. The of the x to the 3rd, we can pull out x to the 2nd because we know the square root of x to the 2nd. That'll be x. And, oh, I could have reduced this to start with. I wasn't thinking. Silly me. Um, and, by the way, this should be absolute value also. And we're left with an x inside the radical. Wow. Yeah, I would have been much better off if I had remembered to reduce this. Tell you what. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. And we'll reduce this first. Square root of 5x to the 4th over... 4, just plain 4. x to the 7th over x to the 3rd became x to the 4th. That looks better, doesn't it? So that gives me square root of 5 stays inside. x. I know the square root of x to the 4th. It's x squared. Pull it outside. Over, square root of 4 is 2. That's better. x squared, square root of 5, over 2. I'm glad I looked in the book. Yep, that's it. All right, let's move on to... Some more evens. Number 18. Okay, uh, what were the instructions on number 18? Um, rationalize the denominator. To rationalize a denominator, the problem is you're not allowed to leave a radical in the denominator. So we have to multiply by some special name for 1. That makes it legal. But a special name for 1 that's going to make that radical go away. How about if we multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. What's that do for us? Square root of 8 times square root of 3 is square root of 24 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. We're practically done. We're not quite done though because we do have to simplify this radical. What square goes into 24? Mm -hmm. I heard somebody thinking it. 4 times 6. The 4 pachings out as a 2. Stuck inside is that 4, 6 over 3. Can I reduce the 6 over 3? No, I cannot reduce the 6 over 3 because that's not a 6. It's a square root of 6. That's a different creature. No, you cannot reduce a radical with a non-radical. Uh-uh. Done. Number 20. Things get a little bit trickier now. This will uh, feel familiar because we did this recently with imaginary numbers. It's the same thing. You're not allowed to have the radical in the denominator. So, oh, just multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. If we do that, when we distribute, we're still going to be left with 7 square root of 3 down here. That's not going to work. What is the trick then? Oh, I remember. Yes, you multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. What's the conjugate of 7 plus square root of 3? 7 minus square root of 3. 7 minus square root of 3. Now, this is kind of nice because anytime you're multiplying conjugates, all you have to do is square this guy, square this guy, and put a minus in between. Why a minus? Because these are not imaginary numbers. Numerator, yeah, sorry about that. Numerator, you're going to have to just foil it out. Firsts. 7 square root of 3. Outers. Square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is a minus 3. Inners. 35. Yes, we'll be combining those. And lasts. Minus 5 square root of 3. Now we can simplify this. What do I see? 7 square root of 3. Minus 5 square root of 3 is going to be 2 square root of 3. And then negative 3 plus 35, or in other words, 35 minus 3, will be 32. Over 49 minus 3 is 46. If you gave me that answer on the test, would I give you full credit or not? I don't know, I find it a little bit debatable because we can divide the numerator and the denominator both by 2. 
So to truly simplify, I divide everything by 2. 1 square root of 3, otherwise known as square root of 3, plus 16 over 23. And I'm just curious, again, I, I'm confident the book writers did do that. Yep, they did. 22. All right, this guy. Here's the best way to think of this. Isn't the square root of 3x to the third the same thing as square root of 3x times square root of 3x times square root of 3x? And look at just this part right here. What's the square root of 3x times the square root of 3x? It's 3x. Ooh, ooh, but absolute value. And we're le left with an extra square root of 3x. Or in other words, of these three square root of 3x's, two of them pop out right there. And we're left with one of them inside. But, again, one might ask the question, uh, doesn't x have to be positive? Yes, it does. So why do we need to repositize it? We really don't. Number 24. Oh, 24, they've made extra easy for us. Because guess what this cubed root does to this cube? They cancel. I get 3 over a squared. No absolute value um, uh, uh, required nor allowed. You never use absolute value with an odd index. Never. 26, so well, 25. Uh, 25 is very simple, very important. To put this into radical form, remember how this works. The denominator becomes your index, the numerator becomes your power, and it doesn't matter if it's on the inside or on the outside, it's all the same thing. What does 27 to the 1 third mean? Oh, it doesn't quite fit up there. That's a 1 up there. 27 to the 1 third means the cubed root of 27. But we know the cubed root of 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So this just equals 3. Done. Done. 27. What does a two-fifths power mean? The denominator becomes the index. The numerator becomes the exponent. Now wait just a moment. Don't we know the fifth root of 32? Yes, we do. Get used to it. The fifth root of 32 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 to the fifth power is 32. So this part here becomes 2, but then we have 2 squared is 4. Now you can get that straight from here. You look at it and say, oh, I know the fifth root of 32 is 2, then 2 squared is 4. Yes. This guy. This becomes 8 to the 5 halves x to the 5 halves. Now, what did the instructions ask us to do here? Number 28, the instructions are saying that we are to write without rational exponents. So to express this without rational exponents, we will, and that means without these guys, instead use radical signs, we would have what? Using radical sign, we would have the square root of 8 to the 5th x to the fifth. 8 to the fifth, x to the fifth, but we take the square root. Yes, that can be simplified somewhat, but have we followed the instructions? The instructions said to write it without rational exponents. Have I done that? Yes, I have. So am I willing to stop right there? Yes, I am. Number 30, cube root of 32. What cube goes evenly into 32? Yes, yes. 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Oh, so the 4 pachinas? No, the 4 does not pachin. We don't know the cube root of 4, but we do know the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 is 
2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the cubed root of 8 is 2. The 8 that chings out becomes a 2. Inside, I'm left with the 4 that I can't take out. Or, what's this about? Or, yes, I could have expressed this as 32 becomes 2 to the 5th. And that would be 2 to the what? 2 to the 5 thirds. The exponent becomes the numerator. The index becomes the denominator. We would have 2 to the 5 thirds. This is actually a better form because we've took, taken that 2 out. Here it's not nearly as obvious that something can come out. Not nearly as obvious. Number 32. Let's see, what are we doing here? Uh, yes, the best way to think of this. Change that 8 into 2 to the 3rd. Then we have x to the 3rd and y to the 2nd. Now, we're trying to get rid of the radical. The instructions here are telling us to write this with rational exponents. Um, I think it's what it says. Yes, we're to rewrite it with rational exponents. So this becomes 2 to the 3 fourths. Again and again and again. The exponent becomes the numerator. The index becomes the denominator. x to the 3 fourths. And y to the 2 fourths. But folks, let's not leave it as 2 fourths. You've known since third grade you're supposed to reduce fractions. That becomes y to the 1 half. Congratulations. We've expressed it without radicals using rational exponents instead. And now we move on to number... Oh, that was the end. Okay, we have finished part one. Part two is due next time. Uh, you've already seen the description of part two. Well, just in case you haven't. Um, it's page, what, uh, page... 337, numbers 30, 30, 34, is that what we left off? Yes, 34 through 62, even. As you work through these, please remember, the evens skip over a lot of important concepts. There are odd numbered concepts that will be on the test. So it would behoove you to take some time to look at the odds as well as the evens. I only assigned evens because I didn't want to overburden you. But the odds are just as important as the evens. And the answers are all in the back of the book. Check yourself. All right, that's it. See you later.